triple expansion steam engine that needs some attention. This is part three, using taper reamers and taper pins to secure the operating arms to the reversing shaft. I wasn't going to start this job, but I couldn't help myself. A lot of aspects of this engine are really annoying me, and looking at it on the bench, fitted with nylon cable ties to hold the part that moves one of the expansion links in position, is not good. Fortunately, the parts I ordered from Blackgate's engineering arrived very quickly, a pair of taper reamers and matching pins. The smallest taper reamer that I own is 1 16th of an inch. That was too small for this job and the rest were too big. These two should be perfect. One of them is a bit on the small side, but that will allow me to ream out the holes slightly and then use the bigger one to finish off the job. In a previous video, I tapped out the roll pins or what was left of them and temporarily loosely fitted taper pins. Now it's time to ream the holes and fit them properly. This clip shows clearly why I needed two taper reamers. The first one's a bit long, but starts the hole off. That allows the entry of the second one to finish the job. Taper reaming is nothing like parallel reaming, because obviously as the taper reamer goes in, the reamer starts to remove more metal. And this is a bit of a problem if you put too much pressure on it. What I generally use are things called pin vices. They don't have a cross handle on them, they just rely on the friction of my hands on the knurled part. I can't go very far through with the small reamer because there are things in the way at the other side, but it's enough to start off the hole and here I'm using the bigger one. There is evidence that the movement of these drop arms on the reversing shaft is not a new phenomenon. I stuck this one on the shaft using Loctite 603, but you can also see there's some kind of epoxy resin on the part as well, which is definitely not my doing. I can't really do a proper job until I dismantle the engine entirely, which I'm trying hard not to do because I've got a lot of other work on at the moment. Taking it very slowly with the reamer, there's a perfectly reamed tapered hole through all of the parts, ready to take a taper pin. The problem is, these taper pins are far too long for such a small shaft, what I'm doing here is using the thick end of the taper pin to make sure it doesn't go through the hole entirely. That means I can cut down the pin to be a perfect fit in the hole. There's a little bit of trial and error involved with this job, but eventually I get the pin where I need it to be. I cleaned it up on my belt sander and here I'm very carefully tapping the pin into place using a piece of metal and a very small hammer. I'm holding this piece of metal at an angle, so I don't mark the gunmetal part, but somebody's already beaten me to that. That's one down, time to move on to the second one, and here I'm about to cut off this cable tie, gone forever. This drop arm fitting is a really sloppy fit on the shaft as you can see. As I'm doing this job, I'm formulating ideas for successful repairs once I strip the engine down. There's quite a few hours work here to make this engine how I want it to be. And the more carefully I look at the mechanical sub-assemblies, the more problems I'm finding. The taper reaming is proceeding without event, but look at the gunmetal bearing that holds everything together. This is not supposed to move. When I first examined this engine before I actually bought it, I noticed quite a lot of things. There's a problem with the geometry and the basic position of the crankshaft and one of the connecting rods looks very suspicious. I now currently have three Stuart triple expansion engines. One of them is a great thing of beauty, built by Mr Ronnie Mall in Scotland. One came from America and was built by a man who used to work on Liberty ships in World War II. And this one came from the late brother of the lady from whom I bought it. The second one, the one that was built by the Liberty ships engineer, is very well made. If you watch the series, I'm sure you will agree with me. But I think he got fed up and then stalled on the job, and this is a major problem when you do jobs like this. I would not like to build one of these from scratch. The castings are expensive, there's a lot of machining. I much prefer to buy them in this sort of a condition and renovate them and make them good. I have a great respect for anyone who's capable of making one of these and getting it to run properly in both directions, like the one I bought from Ronnie Mall. You've just been watching me reaming the second hole. Now it's time to chop the taper pin, clean up the end, and once this is done, the second drop arm will be firmly held in place on the shaft, even though it's a rattle fit to start with. In this clip, I'm checking that the ends of the taper pin aren't sharp, 
and that the arms are secured to the shaft, and indeed they are. The only problem is, the shaft is a rattle fit in the bearings. But it's OK for now, at least it will hold the expansion links in the correct position, without having to use nylon cable ties. Now it's time to secure the main reversing lever to the shaft. Same principle, small taper reamer first, followed by the larger one. To ream this part, I can actually turn the hand wheel to hold it in such a position that the reamer will go through the hole without marking the cladding. Doing this and getting the part in the right position does make the job slightly easier. This is the smaller of the two reamers, and by rotating the reversing hand wheel, I can get the part into a position where the reamer goes nearly all the way through without touching the cladding. And after starting the job off with the smaller reamer, I use the larger one, and this goes further through. It's very important to make sure that the hole is fully tapered on both sides. After reaming the hole in exactly the same way as previously shown, I cut a taper pin to the right size and gently tap it in place. You don't need to use any brute force when doing this. For instance, if you think about the taper on a tailstock chuck that fits in a lathe, once it's fitted into the tailstock quill, it doesn't need much pressure to make it really solid. At this end of the reversing shaft, the roll pin is firmly stuck into the hole. I'm going to try and tap it out like I did the other one, but no, it's very solid. I will address this along with other problems once I start to put the engine back together once I've stripped it down. With the reversing gear secured, the engine does run slightly better. I wonder if it works in reverse. And the answer to that is simple, no it doesn't. Why not? Because the valve timing is completely wrong. And that is it for this episode, I'm really looking forward to taking this engine apart. But as I mentioned earlier, I have far too many jobs on at the moment, so I can't do this just yet. I am going to have a quick look at the timing just out of curiosity and see how many bits of this engine are actually wrong. Thankfully, I love my job and I really do enjoy problem solving. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.